Alrighty, so we are continuing on to uh, part four of our discussion on improper integrals. Uh, so up until now, the integrals we've been looking at have been so the, impro the type of improper integral. So up until now, uh, we have been looking at integrals uh, on either negative infinity up to some point, some point up to positive infinity, or you know, negative infinity to negative infinity. And this is, so this is, this is the, uh, <clears throat> so the idea behind the improper integrals is we need to be able to deal with one of our bounds being infinity. So now the problem is, you know, there are other types of infinities that can arise. And so, you know, if I have a function that has a vertical asymptote, goes off to infinity right here, what if I want to find this area? You know, say to here maybe. Uh, and the question again becomes, you know, does this make sense to do? Will we get a number? Will we get, you know, something that makes just, that is just complete nonsense? Um, and the answer is, you know, we can do this. And this gives us the, um, the improper integral of type two. So we have the definition of improper integral type two. So the first one we're going to look at is, so if f is continuous on a, b, and f is discontinuous at b, then we write the integral from a to b f of x dx is going to be equal to the limit as t approaches b from the left the integral from 0 uh, sorry a to t f of t dt. So the idea is, you know, this is the situation I've drawn above. I'm going to scroll up to that. So the idea is, you know, if we want to determine this area, what we do is we, you know, determine the area up to a certain point and then let that point, you know, get closer to the, um, the discontinuity that we're seeing. But we do it from the left because we don't really care what's happening from the right. We care about the area to the left of that uh, vertical asymptote. Uh, and similarly, similarly, if f is continuous on, <clears throat> we're not going to include a this time, but include b, and is discontinuous at a, then the integral from a to b, f of x, dx, uh, is going to be the limit as t approaches a from the right, the integral from t to b, uh, f of x, dx. So same idea, except now, you know, our discontinuity, whatever's happening is you know, on the left-hand side of the function. So we want to approach A from the right. So I'll leave you to draw that picture. It's just going to be the one I drew up there, you know, reversed. Um, and then the last, so there's one more case, just like there were, there was for type one. And the, this, the problem that can arise here is, you know, the point at which we are considering doesn't have to be, um, well, okay, so let me, so before I, um, before I go into that, let's just say, so we have to, again, so the, so we had this before, but we have to say it again. So the improper integral, integral from a to b, f of x, dx, um, is called convergent 
if the limit exists. And divergent otherwise. So divergent if the limit does not exist. And so just like we had three cases with, um, uh, you know, what we had before, we have, you know, another case here where instead of, you know, having a discontinuity on the right or the left, we could have a discontinuity in the middle. So we could have something that looks like this. Um, and you have to deal with that a different way. So any, any integral around zero there um, would fall into this case. So if f has a discontinuity at c where uh, so a is less than c less than b so c is between a and b um, and the integral from a to c um, f of x dx and the integral from c to b f of x dx are both convergent. There's no e in converge, or both. So, and they're both convergent. We define, so now we're gonna integrate, you know, around that um, discontinuity, that singularity. The integral from a to b, f of x, dx, we're going to say is the integral from a to c, f of x, dx, plus the integral from c to b, f of x, dx. Uh, and so the point behind this is, you know, we, we can, what we can do um, with these integrals with a discontinuity in the middle is we can break it up into two integrals and just integrate over it um, from either side. Uh, so let's do an example. So we have find the integral from two to five of one over the square root of x minus two dx. And so, you know, we have to be careful here because, you know, we can see that, um, you know, at x equals two, the denominator is zero. And that means we have a discontinuity there. Uh, so uh, this is one of our this is our improper integral um, of the first type. Um, so we're gonna deal with it uh, with I think part uh, sorry it's it's the it's an improper integral of the second type. So I believe part B is the one that deals with this from the lower bound is the discontinuity. Yeah. So we're gonna use part B here. Um, so the idea is you know you just you just instead of actually you know evaluating this we're gonna first turn it into a limit. So the limit as t approaches 2 from the right, the integral from t to 5, 1 over the square root of x minus 2 dx. And now we can just do this integral and leave the limit out. So limit as t approaches 2 from the right. This integral is uh, straightforward. So you're going to get, you know, square root of x minus 2 and you also need a factor of two uh, in order to cancel out the one half when you take the derivative. If you need to do uh, u substitution, do it. Um, at this point, I assume you guys know how to do u substitution. I'm doing these in my head because uh, it's easier for me that way. Um, we're going to evaluate this from t to five. And so this is the limit as t approaches two from the right of two times, and then we're going to evaluate this. So. Uh, square root of 5 minus 3, or 5 minus 2 is 3, minus the square root of t minus 2. So just evaluating that integral. And so you can see, you know, that uh, the first one doesn't involve t, so I don't even need to um, worry about how anything going on wrong with that limit. Um, it's going to be, you know, just it's a constant, so it is what it is. Uh, the second one, it's a continuous function. Square root of, well, so it's a continuous function at 2, I should say. Uh, so the square root of t minus 2, uh, it's going to have the same limit from the right and left. So this is going to be equal to 2 square root of 3 uh, minus the limit as t approaches 2 from the right. Sorry, I think I said left earlier. I meant right. 
square root of t minus 2. And I can just plug 2 into that. So this is 2 radical 3. And now again, this is kind of, you know, bizarre. Um, we're integrating this thing that shoots off to infinity, uh, and we get something that is finite. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of applications with this. Um, anything in physics. Um, so when you're, so a lot of these uh, the things we run into in physics might be singular or, you know, have this infinity at some point. Um, and we, want to, we want to be able to integrate those quantities. Let's do one more example, and that'll wrap up this video because I think I'm over 10 minutes right now. I'd like to get two examples done. So determine uh, whether the integral from 0 to pi over 2 secant of x dx converges or diverges. All right, so uh, when we're dealing with secant, it's easier to think of it in terms of um, cosine, uh, at least when we're trying to determine its behavior. So um, secant of 0 is 1 over cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so secant of 0 is 1 also. Uh, the problem is, you know, secant of pi over 2 is 1 over cosine of pi over 2, which, you know, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So secant of 0, so, secant of, so that tells us secant is discontinuous at pi over 2. So we're going to need to do, uh, so we're going to have to break this up into uh, something like part A for the second form. So we have 0 to pi over 2, secant of x dx is the limit as t approaches pi over 2 from the left, uh, integral from 0 to t, secant of x dx. And I kind of hard to write on these um, tablets, so my handwriting is bad, but it's much worse on these things. I apologize for that. Um, so, okay, so let's uh, evaluate this integral. So this integral, um, there's uh, ways of doing it, um, but this is one that we have um, in our table. So if you look at the table, this one appears. Uh, this one is the natural log of secant x plus tangent x. Evaluated from, and then we're going to evaluate this from zero to t. So again, I just looked at and looked in the table; it's there. Um, that one's a little harder to do. Um, so this is the limit as t approaches pi over two from the left. Uh, so we have ln of secant of t plus tangent t. Um, and then minus ln of secant of 0 plus tangent of 0. All right, so we're just going to keep going, try and simplify everything we can. Pi over 2 from the left. And you can already see, you know, this first term here we're going to run into some problems with. Uh, we, were, we were originally looking at secant. Um, in our integrand, and we said it was, you know, discontinuous at pi over 2. Um, so it looks like, you know, we're going to have to evaluate this at pi over 2 again. Uh, so that's going to lead to some problems. Uh, the other issue is tangent um, also is um, discontinuous at pi over 2. So we're going to have to watch out for that. Uh, so but so that this first term stays the same. The second term, uh, secant of 0 is 1. Tangent of 0 is 0. So this is ln of 1. Sorry, this isn't a plus between them. It's a minus. It doesn't matter. But ln of 1 is 0, so this is the limit. t approaches pi over 2 from the left of the ln of secant of t plus tangent of t. And one thing you should, you know, you should um, have, a, have an idea of what these graphs, graphs look like. So secant looks like this. So it's kind of hyperbolic looking. It has these discontinuities here at pi over 2, negative pi over 2. So this is secant. Tangent is uh, the goofier looking one, looks like that. 
And again, these happen at um, negative pi over 2, pi over 2. This is tangent. So as t approaches pi over 2 from the left, um, secant is approaching infinity and tangent is approaching infinity. Um, so that tells us then that, you know, ln of something really big, well, ln goes off to infinity also um, as the argument gets really large. So we then have that the integral from 0 to pi over 2 um, secant of x dx is infinity. It's divergent. That's what we mean when we write infinity. Uh, because, again, um, as t goes to pi over 2, secant and tangent are, are blowing up. They're getting really large and positive. So ln is getting really large and positive. So this integral diverges. So I'm going to stop the video there. Um, so we've seen the two types of um, we've seen the two we've seen two of the types of the type two uh, inter, uh, 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 improper integral. Sorry, putting that word there. Um, so we're going to see a couple more examples, and we're going to talk about comparisons. Um, so we'll, we'll be able to tell when integrals uh, diverge or converge. Um, without actually um, needing to evaluate them.